Welcome to the Ali Family Podcast. If you appreciate Black love and Black excellence, please go ahead and subscribe. We are welcoming you, our family. Thank you for continuing to listen and support. We are, as you can see, participating in Vlogtober. We really just wanted to share a little more about us, let you know the things that we're interested in, the things that we like to do. Got a little more personal with the art collection. Definitely so. let us know what you think about the art collection and wanted to also just share some motivation and positivity with you all. I'll definitely take time to check out those videos. So to go more and talk more about our vlogs, they really were around the regular things that we do. I think our first one was a date night. We do date night every week. Date night. I think we have a good balance around trying to find things that we like to do explore new places, trying to do things that make it fun. Glad that we've been able to do that. It is important to make sure that you're doing something that, that you both enjoy. That makes it even better. Probably one of my favorite things about date night is like getting dressed up. These past couple of years, everyone spent a lot more time inside. Getting dressed up to go somewhere it has really been fun to me. And then of course the food, going out to enjoy some good food and good company with my man here is always enjoyable. And that actually is a good idea. In one of our upcoming vlogs, give you a little BTS, as they say in the industry, some behind the scenes of getting dressed, getting ready for a date night. I think that could be fun. Something that people can relate to. Vlogtober. Uh, we've been trying to keep it pretty organic by sharing the things that we're interested in, the things that we do on a daily basis. If you have any suggestions, any thoughts about future ideas feel free to share that in the comments we do look if we get enough of those comments we might be able to put that into action for a future vlog for the last week of october or or vlogtober as they say when we talk about date night for the brothers out there i know a lot of people think about where the place has to be or if it has to be a big deal. You want to be the one planning. You want to be the one that's putting in the thought. Mm -hmm. The main thing you want to think about is just what the experience will be like. You do want to do something that's thoughtful and that you both can enjoy. Like the whole part of the date doesn't have to be something that's just all about money, money, money. So you can mix and match. You can add part of the date, some things that might include a nice walk outside to a park, maybe a museum, maybe something where you get the opportunity to just walk and talk and then combine that with a nice dinner where you have a chance to sit down and enjoy each other's company. So always look for that opportunity to mix something fancy in, but also you can mix something that is free, but, but will add to the experience as well. So I like to do that. Look for high experience with high value. You do want to make sure that you're getting quality so where you do go does matter. So you do want to spend that money to make sure that it's the right place and that you have the best experience at that place. But also look for those opportunities maybe to take a walk or to look at what exhibit might be coming to your city or just experience your city together like tourists and just kind of appreciate some of those things and just have fun with it. So just wanted to add that in there. I've really appreciated all these date nights. They're creative, they're enjoyable, and I always have a good time. And I know we have our standard, well, I should say our standing date night, but here and there, every once in a while, we also sprinkle in a bonus date experience. Mm -hmm. We went to the mall recently, and that really turned into a date. Sometimes we were together, so we you know, were able to spend time in each other's presence, talk to each other. So that was fun too. Things like that um, turn into dates. Oh. Just to pivot real quick, I nope. mentioned going to the mall. I did put up a vlog when we were at the mall of when we were in the food court. And in the comments, let us know what place you think we went to out of all of those options. We did go to three different ones. So that's a hint. I'm glad we got a chance to talk about date night, especially when you're talking about relationships, building those bonds and building that trust and love and everything it needs to put into a relationship. So that's important. In addition to that, one thing that has also been fun to do is kind of keeping up on some of the black excellence that we've been seeing in life, whether it's stuff that's happening in the community, locally, here, we had and are still in the process of having local political races where a lot of the candidates are black men and black women in positions where historically 
it's not been black men and black women in those spaces. You know, we did have a learning bump, a little learning curve. We had the opportunity to have a black woman as a candidate for our mayor due to some of the newness of our political organizing as a people. We missed out on that opportunity. But even with the options of who's there now, it is still a new look for what will have been there historically for our city. Um, most likely, well, yeah, the, the candidates that are left are both women. That's a new look for our city. Pretty much as long as I can remember, it's usually been a white man, and a, you know, a white man in that position. And we're in Boston. So just to give some added context to that, shout out for some local black excellence. So I'm at the edge of my seat to see how the remainder of these elections pan out. I am disappointed about the mayoral race. Yeah, same here. Mm -hmm. We had a really good chance of it being, there was a really strong chance of a black woman being the mayor and we fumbled that. So Lesson learned, hopefully in the next four years, we'll get it together and try to see how it looks and works out for our city. We are on a step in the right direction. So looking forward to see where that goes. So yeah, I just wanted to add that in just to give you an idea of what's happening in Boston. I know a I lot know. of people will sometimes ask, you know, what's going on in Boston? You know, what's going on with the black community in Boston? From all of the things that you typically see, it's never really the accurate example of what's happening. Yeah, I just wanted to use this as an opportunity just to share some of the things that are happening. And while we're at it, given the local shout outs of black excellence, 12th Baptist, a church that we're both connected with and our families connected with. Huge shout out to 12th Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. One of the most prominent and most historical churches. They recently were acknowledged for the work that they've been doing in the community and just, seeing as a huge asset, not just to the people in the community, but just to the city of Boston. Definitely, and so that it becomes more of a national reference 12 Baptist Church was the church that Martin Luther King preached at, either while he was going to school here in Massachusetts or shortly thereafter. So it's a historic church, lots of black excellence. Even with all that history, you still very active, have provided a lot of relief to communities. A lot of times people will always say, hey, you what know, is the church doing? That's, that's a that's, question that I hear a lot of people saying. You know, this was just a great opportunity to highlight things that the church are doing for members and people that are in the community, providing food through the food pantries, the protective equipment to make sure that people are safe in the communities, just to go about everyday activities, having the center for the children, the educational programs for have that spiritual grounding. The church is definitely doing a lot for the community in addition to the members of the church. And I do want to connect that to some of the things that we've been watching. The reason that I made that reference to Boston is because of the show, Our Kind of People. And a lot of people have been watching that and getting a better idea of what the culture is when it comes to the Cape and Massachusetts and Boston. There's a lot of references. So kind of to give some background, Oak Bluff is like a huge destination that a lot of people go to. And some people call it Inkwell or The Well. Like a lot of prominent and prestigious Black people locally but around the world, all around the country, live there, have businesses there, or summer there, as they like to say. And the main character in this show is Angela, who was played by Yaya DaCosta. She's from Boston. The more prominent family that she's trying to win their graces of, even make a reference of, being a black woman from Boston was something that they looked down on. And that's something that's being pushed out to what people think about being black in Boston is kind of an association with being in the ghetto or not necessarily coming from the high class parts of the city. So I just wanted to make that connection because when I saw that on the show, I was like, yeah, you know, that is kind of how a lot of people make our city look like. You think about Boston and you don't always see the black people in these movies or these TV shows. Some of the shows that did become more popular and highlighted our city didn't necessarily highlight the lived experience of the people that we know, our friends, our families. So just wanted to connect that there are lots really of good things that are going on within the black community here in Boston. But back to the show, woo! I'm glad for some of that black excellence that we're seeing. 
Hashtag melanin magic, melanin popping, black girl magic. Just wanted to shout out our kind of people. It's early in the season. It's on Hulu. So if y'all, if, if y'all have Hulu, you can catch up on the episodes if you haven't seen it already. But it comes on Fox. It's still early. It's really good. We have been watching BMF together. I'm the king of rock. King, nobody mess with us, man. centered around family and it's really it really drills down into the black family dynamic during the time what was it the 80s mm -hmm. all them dudes had money women clothes and fly whips but more than anything they had respect i mean looking from the outside in as viewers of the tv it's like a time capsule to me and we see the struggles, the joy of being in a black family, black fatherhood, black motherhood, siblings within a household. That's my car. Oh, it ain't full. It's my boss's. And one day, I'm gonna have one just like it. Meach, you coming or what? There is still that connection to the drug life, to the gang life, Big Meach, black mafia family, Southwest T. So this is kind of before they became BMF. For all of you Marvel fans, this is their origin story, as they like to say. So it kind of gives us that foundation of everything that happened before they became the notorious people that America had known them as. As long as we got my vision in your brains, I won't stop rocking till I retire. Can't nobody mess with us, man. They do a lot of flashbacks when they show them as younger kids, but then also show them they're still not old in this. They're teenagers in this, but just the family dynamic. So to me, I, I feel like the family also plays as a protagonist in this as well, in addition to everything else. For sure. And you mentioned the flashbacks. We see how these teenagers, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at them as in their teenage life now, but... We see the flashbacks of Your the younger young. childhood where there was huge struggle and that sort of birthed a desire to do something bigger to get out of the hole that they were in, sort of, and to not ever be there anymore. So that shows, I guess, you know, that helped to show us their hunger for just doing anything that they could do or not, not anything, something specific to guarantee that they'll never have to experience that again. It's interesting because it is based off of true life story and events. So there's dramatization to add the TV feeling to it and seeing the things that you never saw and got to know. I guess in this one, it's like, you know, the villain doesn't die, right? Like, you know, these people are still alive to these day. You know, one is in prison, um, Big Meech, they say he might only have a year left in prison. And his brother, Southwest T, he was just released last year. We are getting the show with the release of one of the brothers. He's able to have a lot of input on this with 50 as well. There are a lot of family connections with Big Meech's son, Lil Meech, playing his father. Tasha Smith directing this, black writers, black directors, Pick the perfect cast. I like that you're um, drawing a parallel between um, this show and shows like it and um, like the Marvel Universe superheroes because there was a time and maybe there's still a time for some people where the people in the neighborhood with the most money or X, Y, Z, they're like the superheroes. They're like, oh, the big shiny thing. And they they found the ticket out. I'm sure like Big Meech and Southwest T, they were superheroes in their community to some people. Looking forward to Insecure, of course, my favorite show. How long did it take for you and to get back back? We were fake back before we were back back. Yes, folks, um, I'm so excited about Insecure. Are we gonna be okay? But I don't Speaking of black excellence, I think it was really interesting that Issa Rae had recently shared a story about 
character development on her show and how writers or other cast members or people in the business from HBO side had told her early that she would need white characters on the show for it to pop. Originally, she wasn't going to listen to them, but she ended up doing it. She ended up, um, she mentioned that the character from season two, the white woman that she worked with that always was like quirky and had those crazy ideas. Like, I think it was outreach or we help little kids, (laughs) whatever the, or nonprofit organization that she worked with. But the adding that white woman to the character was a suggestion that she said she listened to, but then after that season, went back to her gut of wanting it to be developed and um, centered around a black cast. And if you notice, that's what you've seen from the first season going forward from that season two, season three, season four, and then also this upcoming season five as well has been centered around a black cast. And I'm glad that she listened to her gut on that one and went back to her roots of wanting all black people to win. You get a chance to see the growth and development of the cast from season one up until season five. And also big shout out to black women, right? Issa Rae with Insecure and Tasha Smith with BMF. Yes, black women directing, we are here for it. Absolutely. This one was pretty heavy on the black excellence. Next episode, we might lean a little bit more into the black love. I know we started there with date nights and talking about that. That said, this has been the Ali Family Podcast. Thank you for listening and watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay blessed. Thank you.